So my name is Ronika Diesel. I am the Education Director of DEMA SA, and I'm also um, a Director of Modelware Systems. We uh, are, one of, are, are one of the accredited training providers of DEMA SA as well. Um, my husband, Howard, is the President of DEMA SA, and he presents most of those webinars that you guys have been attending. Um, if anyone hasn't, it's super free training. Most Mondays and Wednesdays are the DEMA ones, and they, they have different focuses. There's a first, first Monday of the month is a data modeling focus. And then the, I think the first Wednesday is a data governance focus. And then there's a poppy focus and an ethics focus and a data science focus as well. And then our monthly DEMA chapter meeting on the third Wednesday of every month is a general focus. All of these are between four and five. Every Thursday is African Data Management Community. And each month we go through a different a, a, a topic, but with a different focus for different people. So we do for the data citizens, for the data specialists, professionals, for the data execs and EIA yeah, managers. So each uh, topic, so this month we are doing master data. And so each of those Thursdays will be, it will be aimed at a different uh, type of professional. And then next month we're doing um, data literacy in that it's going to be how to communicate with data, how to read um, and argue and interpret data. So that's going to be the May focus. Uh, aiming it at the citizens who are those people that, that that use data but are not necessarily data professionals. They're your finance people and your procurement people, those people that use data. Then we've got the, the data management professionals who are everybody who are working within the knowledge areas as far as the DEMA wheel goes. Then there's the ERM managers who are responsible for having your team skills and managing teams. And then the execs are the CDOs and, and those people responsible for business strategy and, and how, how the data affects them. So that's been our, data uh, our um, African Data Management Community Focus webinars. So please join all the groups. If you need any more information, Debbie will, will send, them, send it to you. Get hold of Debbie or either on LinkedIn or, or, or drop your um, email address on the chat here. Okay, let's get with it. And um, I'm going to get my presentation going. Sorry, is there a question? Sorry, Veronica. I, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to find out something. So, mm, sure. with the strategists uh, that you mentioned um, at the end, um, in terms of the uh, how they utilize that data, right? Do yeah. you also perhaps cover maybe like a session on storytelling, especially to people in general? You know, using utilizing that data. Mm, I think that that's the kind of thing we will cover in the literacy. Okay. Yeah, right. that's the storytelling. Let me just make a note of that because that is a great one. Yeah, we do yeah. have a recording of a session that we had with Scott Taylor when he spoke to Dame S.A. about his new book on how to tell your data story. So uh, I can send that to you if you would like. Yes, please. Okay. Oh, I would appreciate that. Just leave your email and I will send it through. Oh, awesome. Thanks, David. Yes, Scott Taylor is the data whisperer. Our, our DEMA SA chapter meetings, we have been managing to get international speakers to, to speak there. It was, what's his name, Popini, Francesco Popini. He spoke on the data modeling one and, and Scott Taylor. And um, we're definitely trying to get more international people for particularly that third, third Wednesday of each month. Um, okay, I'm gonna share my screen. DEMA CDMP Q&A, and um, why I've got a man on the top of a mountain is because our data journey is an adventure, and it's a kind of adventure that requires risk-taking, it requires preparation, it requires getting knowledge, it requires getting fit, it requires getting tools on your belt, and it also requires somebody to, to lead you, to guide you. So that's what we want to be as DEMA SA and Modelware Systems. We want to be a partner in helping people to get to accomplish their data management career um, goals, their career aspirations. And that's something that we, we, when we have people coming for training, we always ask them, where do you want to be? Where's your, what are you aiming for? What's the top of your mountain? And what's the view going to look like from the top of your mountain? 
So some of these, that those personas that we've talked about in our um, African Data Community webinars that, that Debbie said, um, the Thursday one, we are aiming at citizens, professionals, managers and execs. So we've identified some of these personas and in our data management training, we're not looking at the citizens here. We are looking at these different types of people to train up the mountains. There is the specialist, a professional who is a specialist in his or her um, area, like a, a, a specialist model or a specialist data architect. There's also those kinds of people who want to become thought leaders, as in Scott Taylor, you know, people like that, that would be writing books, speaking at international conferences, or just like um, Francesco Papini, thinking of a different way of modeling a dimensional model. You think of ah, and and this is going to this is going to revolutionise the way we do things. They're, they're, that's an ambition of certain of our people. A, a lot of people say, oh, I want to be the CDO. Maybe they're not quite sure about why they want to be the CDO. But um, you know, if you if you're a strategic type of thinker and you enjoy that that, that kind of responsibility and challenge, then you'd be a good CDO. And um, this is the EIM manager position. So we take everybody from entry into um, training. So like you guys have come and said, we want to become certified. We take people on this journey to become a certified CDMP professional. And that's what this talks about, is getting your CDMP certification. Now, further from that, we can mentor you um, to get to these other positions where you, where you would like to be. And how it's very good at identifying what kind of people would, would be good. Or somebody comes along and says, I want to be the CEO. And then he looks at that person and uh, with a few questions and, and says, actually, you know, you would be far better as, as, as a specialist or a thought leader. You know, that's going to fulfill you better. Or someone comes wanting to be a, a thought leader and really that people's, that person's going to make an, an awesome exec because they've got all the business savvy as well. Whatever. So that, that's the idea is when we get people, we want to take them to the top of their mountain wherever it is. We, we want to be able to help you to achieve all your, your goals. Um, this little blocky here is something that I'm trying to do some research on thinking styles and to see what thinking styles would be better in which kind of position. Uh, it's Gregory Rich's thinking styles. It's a, it's, it's a quick, quick, it's 15 questions that you have to answer. And if you're interested in, in, in answering them, I'll send you a report of what your thinking styles are. And it, it's not an, an, um, an, an, an analysis. I'm not a professional in this kind of thing. I'm just taking what, what the Gregory Rich says with your thinking styles. It's a concrete, sequential, concrete, abstract, um, I mean, abstract, sequential, abstract, random, concrete, sequential, and concrete, random. And each one of those have got a, a strength in a different area. So if a, a concrete, random might make a good exec, and an abstract, sequential might make a good specialist. We're just trying to find some correlations now so we can, we can help people better. So I can send you the link, either that works off the phone, I can drop the link into, or Debbie can drop the link into the, the chat box. And if you would like to, I'll send you a, um, I'll send you a, an, an, a, a little report with your, um, your style and a, a Power BI analyzed version of your style. So we can get onto that later. But this is our thinking as Dama SA and Model Way Systems, is to get people on the journey and support them through the journey. Okay, so just first of all, DEMA International supplies the exams. So let me just quickly tell you a little bit about DEMA. These slides come from my my training course because we were, we, we got into this, your data management careers like climbing Mount Everest. I found some awesome pictures. So this is the airport when you come into to start your base camp trek. You fly in from Kathmandu into the scary little runway on the scary little plane, and then you have to hike for 14 days to get acclimatized and to get fit. So our acclimatization, getting fit, is getting prepared to write the, day, the, the data management fundamentals exam, which is our equivalent of being at base camp. So once you've done that exam, you're ready to climb your mountain. And DEMA International started in the 1980s. Uh, John Zachman, who's the guru of data architecture, 
was one of the founding members. And that was when they realized that data was really important. Before that, data was just something that was in computers, probably in your punch cards, and it didn't it didn't really business business wasn't quite aware of the importance of data it was something to do with all those those boffins that knew how to work computers and computers in those days were very different to each other they were all mainframes and and each one had a, a different electronic architecture that didn't they didn't communicate nicely they didn't talk nicely to each other they had different technical um formats so so converting characters in, on an IBM and converting characters on an ICL into bytes was different. They didn't talk to each other either. So um, to get, a, a, if, if a company merged, like um, back in the 80s, um, ABSA was formed. Remember that? And it was formed by, uh, uh, there were at least four or five major banks. And these major banks had different computers. They had IBM, they had, they had uh, Univac, they had Burroughs, they had all these different things that didn't actually talk to each other. The only way to get that kind of integration is to get your data into a, an integrated format that you can then work with. So that's why DEMA International was formed because it was recognized that data was important and we had to learn to manage data and to integrate data. There are DEMA chapters all over the world, and we've got DEMA SA, which start, it was started as Southern Africa because we looked after all the Southern African countries. But we're actually, at the moment, the only active chapter in Africa, um, but Botswana is in a formation stage, so we're going to have DEMA Botswana soon. So we can all actually become members of DEMA SA and members of DEMA Botswana to support them, which would be awesome. Um, you don't have to be... Uh, African to be a member of DEMA SA. So our um, Indian friends are very welcome to become members of DEMA SA as well. We, we got uh, the, the, the president of, of DEMA Canada, Calgary. He attends all our webinars and he's actually become a member of DEMA SA now. So um, if you want to become a member, you can contact membership at dema.org.za to join or look on our website. The website is dema.org.za. Um, these are the LinkedIn groups. Uh, Debbie, uh, Debbie runs these, so she's our, our social marketing person. She makes sure that everybody is, is, um, who, who wants membership of the groups is helped. Um, so join our groups, our LinkedIn groups. You can also find all our webinars on Meetup as well. So um, if you put your email on, Debbie will help you with all of that. Okay, so CDMP certification, which is what this talks about, that's, that is the certification that verifies that you are a data management professional. It was um, DEMA International um, set up groups to, to set all these exams and they provide the exam. So they provide the certification. Um, and it, it all lines up with the DEMA DMBOK. It's internationally recognized. So worldwide, you will be able, that, that uh, an employer will be able to, to verify your skills. If you get the certification, there's a little bag that you can, you can put on your LinkedIn profile and, and that's got metadata behind it that can verify online that you indeed have passed the exams. So it's, it's, it's good that it shows that you've got a, an overall um, knowledge of, of data management and in your particular specializations that you understand and you can apply um, what you know. So uh, we've had a person who, who was in between jobs who decided to do consulting because she was in between jobs. She went and got certified and then landed an awesome job at Investec. So um, they said that the data management certification opened the doors for her. The exams are all based on this DEMA DM book. It's a super fat book. Um, I put little tags on to make it easy to find the different chapters. Okay, so that's the DEMA DMBOK version 2, which all the exams are based on. The DEMA DMBOK version 1 is this one, was published in 2010. It's still uh, valid, but the exams are not set on this. The exams have all been reset 
to this version. So this is the one that you need. The other one is helpful. It gives you a bit more of, of how to, because this, this version is, it's a checklist of what to do in your data management areas and sometimes why we are doing things, but it's very little on, on how to do stuff. So you need your copy because all the exams are open book. The specialist exams and the, the foundation exam, the, the core exam, all open book based on this book. Um, you can get a PDF from technicspub.com or you can get um, a, a hard copy in South Africa, loot or take a lot. I'm not sure um, India where you get that, where you get it from. But that's our version of Amazon. We don't have Amazon here. Yes. Um, it's all based on this demo wheel. And these are all the different knowledge areas which you'd be specializing in. And data governance is the one in the middle because data governance has oversight. And, and control over, over the happening in all of these areas. Data governance is very responsible for making sure that data is managed and, and data management happens in all these knowledge areas. So this is data management. Data governance must make sure it happens according to standards, policies, processes, and all of that. Um, so that's why that's in the middle. All right, so the, the exam itself. Oh, sorry, um, I meant to mention that um, the big banks, big corporates often have a, an enterprise version of the DMBOK. So you can see if your organization has actually got an enterprise version and then you don't need to buy it. Okay, so the core exam is the one that, that has to be written no matter what you're doing. You, you, you used to say, I'm going to do a CDMP associate or a CDMP practitioner and um, that fell away when they when they reset the exams. They still have got this thing called a CDMP associate. Um, that one we are really we are, we're encouraging data stewards and people who are, people who are not interested in being data professionals, data stewards and managers. They get this associate level. You just have to get sixty percent to pass the exam. You only do the data management fundamentals exam, and it's really just. It, it shows that there's an understanding and it also makes sure that the managers who are managing data um, data teams understand what the data teams are all about. So as professionals, we want you to do three exams. So the data management fundamentals exam and two specialist exams. Then they've got these two levels here. Practitioner level, we have to pass with 70% in all three exams. And the master, you have to pass with 80% in all three exams, plus you have to demonstrate that you've got a minimum of 10 years of data experience, which means that you that, that there's a place where you upload your data CV. And um, they verify, a Dame International says um, they verify that, you, you, you know, they don't want to give a master to, to some super clever person who knows how to answer multiple choice questions well, but doesn't have experience because then you can't really call yourself a master. The fellow is one of those honorary uh, certifications. So basically we're all hitting the space here. Is that uh, this industry experience here, you don't have to demonstrate that. It's just a guideline. That you, you think that a person going for a practitioner should have a few years of experience. Here, the, the CDMP associate, you should, in six months, be able to get a 60% pass. Now, what happens when you write the exam, the data management fundamentals exam, and say you get 85%, you actually get awarded a CDMP associate automatically because you've met the requirements for a CDMP associate. But you'll only get awarded a CDMP master when your experience has been verified and you've got 80, over 80% in two more exams. That's how it works. It's a it's it's a it's a bit of a process. Uh, is everyone clear on that? Any anyone any questions about that? The process. Okay, moving on. The um, um, when you've got your three your your three exams, and I did I did mine two years ago, and I got in the seventies. So um, I got this practitioner certificate from Dama International and I got my practitioner badge. Um, I'm since rewriting, uh, rewriting them because I want to get in the 80s. 
So that's, that's on my to-do list to rewrite data modeling and data quality. I've already rewritten the data management for fundamentals and got over 80. So that's my goal this year to get over 80 in all those three. Okay, so the, the, the core exam, which makes sense to write first, but you don't have to, is the one that's over all the knowledge areas. Now the DM box has got 17 chapters. This exam is on the first 14 chapters. The final three chapters are in your data governance specialist exam. So for the fundamentals exam, we only have to go through chapters 1 to 14. And in the exam, the exam is 100 questions long. The randomizing engine that, that draws out of the pool of exam questions to compile each individual's exam. Each individual's exam is different. So if you were at an exam event, which we used to be able to hold before COVID, you would get a different exam to the person sitting next to you because that's, it's a randomizing exam generating algorithm that generates your exam. It pulls from a, a, a pool of about 500 questions. Mm -hmm. It pulls 100 questions out for you. And it will pull, in each chapter, it pulls this number of questions. So um, certain chapters have are, are heavier weighted when it comes to the questions, like data governance, data modeling, also 11, metadata 11 and data quality 11. And the reference and master and data warehousing are 10. So those, those are, they, they have more importance when pre pre preparing for the exam. The other thing that the, the randomizing exam generating algorithm does is it's um, weights, it, it pulls out of different weights of questions. Now the questions have been set in this way. 50% of the questions are easy. They're those kind of questions where you've got a question and five, it's, they're all multiple choice with five choices. And those easy ones, there's one question that is a one um, answer and then four distractors. And those four distractors are obviously wrong and um, the, the one answer is right. So those are the easy ones. Then the next 25% are uh, more challenging in that they are, some of those five are alternatives alternative answers that are right, but you have to pick the one that's most right. So in those cases, usually when you're looking at those questions, you can you can eliminate two of them, and then you look at three and you think, mm, these three are all right, uh, which one is the most right? And so those are the ones that distinguish between the, the, the CDMP associates and the professionals, and then uh, the practitioners. And then there are the next 25% of those are um, challenging because they are the kind of questions that you're not going to be able to look up the answer directly in the DM box. They, they are aligned with the DM box, but they require you to apply your knowledge. So they are applied questions and they're to distinguish the masters. So that's how these questions go. So in other words, say data modeling, you'll get five or six of those very easy ones where there's one obvious right answer and the rest are wrong. And then you get maybe two or three of those ones that are um, with, with alternates and then maybe two that require you to apply the knowledge. So it works like that. When the exam, it, it also generates the, the questions in the knowledge area groups. I'm not sure the order whether the order moves around. They don't come to you in this order. They, 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 the, the order of the chapters seems to be mixed up, but the, the 11 data modeling questions are together. And, and the, the six data security questions are together. So when you, it doesn't have a heading to say data security, but you'll, you'll be going from something, say from documents and content, and then, ah, oh, there's a data security question. Then you'll get six data security questions. So they group together, which is nice, because then you don't have to jump around with your thinking and you know what they're asking. And it also helps with the looking up of answers, although we don't advise you to look up answers in your first pass through the exam. We advise people to pass through the exam and then there's an option to flag questions that you want to go back and look up. Otherwise, you may run out of time looking up. OK, so 
when I do the training, the, the data, the um, certification, data management for certification, I actually do go through the last chapters 15, 16 and 17, even though they're not examinable, they are relevant just for understanding's sake. They, they do pop up in the data governance specialist exam. So for each of the specialist exams, you need to study the chapter well. So say you're going to do the data modeling and design specialist exam. You need to know this chapter within the DMBOT, but you do need to know more. You, you, Steve Hoberman was the, the person who oversaw setting of that exam. So you need to know Steve Hoberman's way very well. Um, at least have the, his um, data modeling made easy with you have, and have gone through the way he says you read uh, uh, data models. That's very important. Data architecture, we've, we've got a reading list um, that, that Debbie can send you the link to of, of specialist exam extra reading that's been recommended to us. And we, we get, we're going to keep it on a link because we're going to keep updating it. You know, new, new stuff arrives that's better. Steve's always pu uh, publishing new books. OK, so these are the specialist exams. Um, you do your core exam, data management fundamentals, which is the previous slide, and then you pick two. So if you're a, a data governance person, you do data governance and maybe data quality or metadata. And if you're a, a, a modeler, data modeling, I did when I, my, I, my first specialist was modeling and design, and then I did data governance and, and I did data quality later because uh, um, Info Blueprint wanted me to review a, a data quality course that they were hoping to market as preparation for the exam. So I did the course, then did the exam, then found that a whole lot of stuff had to be changed in their course. So now their course does indeed pre prepare you for the exam. So I've seen those three. I haven't done I haven't done the others. You know, if you're a data integration person, you may want to do that and maybe um, reference a master or, or data warehousing, whatever. You just have to pick two. Um, recommended reading. That's we we got that spreadsheet of recommended readings on the on the Google Drive. We can send you the, the link if you want it. And um, if you are buying anything from technicspub.com, you can get a 20% discount except for the DMBOC and the DMBOC related stuff. So that's for all the other stuff, 20% discount with our company name Modelware as a coupon. OK, the recertification. Your certification lasts three years, and it's it's not been 100% clear to us yet, but I think it's three years from the last exam that you write. So the third exam that gives you your practitioner or master, they, they, it will last three years. And that's because you got get the DEMA International Membership within your exam fee. When uh, the recertification now is that they're trying to do a process, they're going to update us with this process. So if you do your exams now, we only have to revisit this in three years time. If you only do the associates, it will expire in three years and then you have to rewrite your exams. You can't renew that one. But after three years, you don't have to renew your you don't have to rewrite any more exams. You just need to renew, which means paying a fee, which is obviously your DAMA international membership. And um, so you pay a fee and you have to um, update, upload 30 hours, I think, of professional development over three years. That's 10 hours a year. Um, if you at attend all our webinars, that those those all count. So just keep a uh, webinar attendance. We'd be able to verify that. And um, so, so that's not a problem. Just attend our webinars and you're done for recertification. Now, uh, the, the training course, the data management for certification that, that I give, I go through the entire DMBOC explaining all the, all the data management knowledge areas uh, according to the, the um, context diagram, which is that thing. And um, all the background information you need to know and all the, the uh, activities that need to happen as you're doing these, the, the, data manage, um, the data management knowledge area. So that's the certification training. We go through it. I've summarized the DM box. So there's training, there's notes that you get. I've prepared 
some some helpful exam prep questions as well, and we go through the the data and the the CDMP practice exam, which I've still got access to of mine. So this is the context diagram, which is the the DAMA framework. And this is why this DM box can't tell you how to do things because it's going to go out of date so quickly. We just tell you what activities are important for each knowledge area, what we what inputs you do, activities, what are the, the deliverables, the outcomes, and who is doing what, um, definitions and goals. And that's that's what the the, the DM box, uh, the, sorry, the DM fundamentals exam is, is basically on. So we, when we do the course, it's four full days going through the entire DM box, and um, we go through the, the, the data governance type stuff in day one. And I'm also trying to do things that have got heavy questions first when everybody is fresh, because by day four, everybody is saturated. So day two, we do the technical stuff. And for those people who are not modelers, this is very challenging, the data modeling and design chapter. So um, I'm not doing any more than three on day two. We run, we, we offer Steve Hoberman's Data Modeling Masterclass, which is the most fantastic course. Anybody who's in modeling, I would thoroughly recommend it. I've, I've sat in with Howard and assisted him, I think, three times. Every time I learn something more, it's, 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 a, it's very practical. You're always applying your knowledge. You, you don't just sit there and, 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 and absorb. And there's um, data models to be prepared all the way through. And so that's a great one for preparing you for the data modeling and design specialist exam as well. So to do just, we do five days. That's five, a five day full time data modeling course. And I've got to give you most of that information here. So it's very heavy. It's very hard for people who are not modelers. But honestly, we try and make sure that everybody can, can answer the data modeling questions. And then metadata. So they go well together because models are metadata. And then here, all these ones, the integration and interoperability for our data engineers, um, reference and master and data warehousing, that's all moving data and integrating it. And then big data and data science fits in nicely with the data warehousing. And then we can do a practice test together. We can do my practice test, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, and then the last day, we do the, the, lighter, the lighter ones, which are still important and still really interesting. And the practice test as many times as you like. And I've got some fun quizzes as well, as well as the, the, the heavy exam practice questions for, for this course. And you get um, study notes and mind maps. So that helps you just to, to um, make sure that you understand everything according to the DM box. Okay, so these are the training courses that we have got at the moment for specialist exams. We've got the governance course where Howard goes through data governance. He's got templates and Power BI models and all sorts of things to do your data governance as well as to pass the exam. So you actually come out of there with data governance techniques and how it was in the data governance exam setting team. So um, he prepares you nicely for that. Uh, the data modeling one, as I said, it's Steve Hoberman's course. We are only allowed to give it to Africans though because we charge a fraction of what they charge in America or Europe. Um, because of our exchange rates, and I'm not sure whether we can stretch it to Indians, but we can ask Steve. Um, he's, he's, he's asked us only to give it to Africans. Data architecture, the, the planning, and, and that, that how, it's in, how it's leading the data architecture exam setting team. So this one's going to be a good one as well if you want to do data architecture. And then we're doing a data science course. And if you want to do data quality, uh, Info Blueprint is the, 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 the go-to course. Um, so that's other courses that we do. I just, just to I've put that in because remember I used that mountain analogy first. So here our planning, getting to the, the Everest base camp, that's the trick they do over two weeks to get acclimatized and fit to the base camp. And that's where we write our fundamentals exam. And not everybody's going to go up the mountain. Not everybody that checks to get base camp goes up the mountain. But um, once we go up the mountain, that's when we are taking you through the specialists, other qualifications, and preparing you for the top. 
this is an example of someone who would want to be a, a data modeling thought leader and present at international conferences. This is Steve Hoberman's Data Modeling Zone conference, and he's offered us um, speaking positions at his conference if we can get it, we can get people fired up and ready. And so that's how a modeler would get fired up and ready using it, even Steve's own certification for which you get nine, you have to get 90% to pass. Um, and case studies, these international conferences, they love case studies to show how we have, have solved African problems using data uh, DAMA techniques. So that's what these case studies would be and how it would help prepare that. So it's also good for your company because it's a real problem that gets that how it helps you solve and you prepare and you present at um, some international stage and people are all welcome to practice on our our DEMA platform and our African data management community platforms they're there as safe spaces for you to practice becoming a a, 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 a presenter at conferences too so that's available especially especially the DEMA ones Anybody is if you've got something you want to present, just get hold of Debbie and, and, and she'll pass it on. OK, that was my presentation. Are there any questions on that? I'm going to go quickly through the, the how, how you how you apply for the exam and what it looks like to get into the exam. So think of questions if you if you have any and interrupt me. Um, I'm just going to carry on going through the, the how you get into the exam. So cdmp.info is where you book your exam. It's uh, the, the DEMA International site. This is exam, and then it goes book an exam. So before I go there, hold on a sec. Uh, th this is about, uh, about certifi certification, some of what I've told you. There's some frequently asked questions. This, remember I said you had to submit your CV if you want to master, you've got 10 years of experience. Um, here's where you upload it. If you're already certified there, they, they, that's where they help you. And here's book an exam. So we go book an exam. If there, if we had events, which was we hope to get to after COVID, then you would click here to attend an exam event. But um, this is where you you go into pick your your um, exam, we, we we are able to per bulk purchase. So if your business has a whole team that needs to be certified, either the business can bulk purchase exams or um, you can get us to. Unfortunately, the only method of payment here is by credit card. So if your business can bulk purchase by credit card, that's probably better because we have to charge that. So um, otherwise, what we do for the, the major banks in SA is um, we bulk purchase, then you get a, a coupon, you know, like prepaid airtime. We get you a coupon and then you go in and buy your exam using the coupon. So either you at this point have your credit card in your hand or you have got a coupon that we've bought for you in your in, in your possession. So this is the first one. Data management fundamentals. Obviously, you don't have to do it first, but that's the one we, we um, recommend you do first. And then data governance, data quality, all these other ones, what you want to do. Um, if you decide you want us to prepay all three of them, then your coupon will work for three exams and you enroll in three. So we enroll in the exam and it gives you instructions. It's a little bit complex because the, the exams are being hosted by Robinson Ryan in Australia and it's hosted on a, a learning management system. So um, this is the, the way that they've set it up on their learning management system. You self enroll in the exams and, and, and then you pay and then Canvas is where the exams are taken. And Badger is, the, is, is another application that keeps your badges and keeps track of your path to getting full certification. So um, the, the next page here, if, if you, you enroll in the exam, then they're going to send you two emails, this um, enroll in the exam if you intend to take it. It's basically the screen I'm gonna give you here is, is just here enroll, and then it asks you for your, in, your, your name and your email, and it's going to send you an email, and it's going to enroll you on, uh, then you enroll on the canvas 
and only then you uh, only then you pay. What we advise people as well, use your your personal email if your company, even if your company is sponsoring you, because you're going to you may move companies and your certification stays your certification. So it, it doesn't really make a difference to your company if you've used your personal here. It, it's just sometimes the the challenges with company laptops and all sorts of things like that. So um, then you'll you'll get your um, your your confirmation emails confirming your enrollment in the exam, your your enrollment on Canvas, and then you have to follow your instructions. And and we get people who are reading too fast and don't follow properly. You have to make sure you follow instructions properly. And then Canvas, logging in here. So let me show you Canvas. This is mine. Log in. So that's what they assign you with that, those two emails that give you the log in here on Canvas. And when you log into Canvas, you're going to see the exams that you've enrolled for. If you've enrolled for three of them, I, I think you do it one at a time, but all of the exams that you enroll for end up on your dashboard. So I, I said I, I've done fundamentals, done governance. That was in that was two years ago, and modeling and design. And they've upgraded them in, on their system. So this is the one I have to do now, and that's the data quality I have to do now. So they are waiting for me. My account it shows badges. So once you've passed your exams. They issue you with badges. You can see there's courses and all of this because it's it's a learning management system. We're not too worried about courses and calendar and inbox and history and all that. So the fundamentals, because I passed uh, my data management fundamentals with over 80, I got given a master level badge. I got given a practitioner level badge because I met the requirements and I got given the CDMP associate certification. So you're welcome to share that on LinkedIn, but I mean, I would share this the my master level badge. Badger keeps them for you. So because I'm going for master, I don't want to say I'm a CDMP associate because I'm actually going for more. So share that master level. And then, um, so then they, it keeps all your others. I've got the master level governance, but modeling, remember I said I only got 70%. So uh, I've only got a practitioner level there. And um, what was that one? Data quality. Also, I got in the 70s practitioner level. So this keeps your badges and then you can share your badges on LinkedIn and, and anybody can verify your badges. Let me go back to the course modeling and design. Um, oh, that's, uh, that's the old one. Sorry. That's the old one. That one. That's the new one. So when you go into your course, you click on that tile. That says data management fundamentals. I'm just showing you this one because this is this is the new format. It shows you data modeling and design or data, whatever your exam was. Welcome to this. Then it says access exam. So there are two time versions of this. Um, all of you whose first language is not English are entitled to use the English as the second language. That gives you an extra 20 minutes. So even if you're Afrikaans and your English is brilliant, take this one. If you are, you know, like Hindi is your home language and your English is brilliant, take this one. You're entitled to it. Gives you an extra 20 minutes. So instead of having 90 minutes, this one is 90 minutes over 100 questions. This one's 110 minutes over 100 questions. Gives you a good, it gives you a good um, advantage there. So me, I'm not entitled to it. So um Access, I, I'm, I'm only I'm English first language, so you go to that. Then the first thing you do is pay for your exam. I, I don't think it's going to let me do this because I've already done it. Pay for your exam it takes you to a cart, and at that cart, at that point of the cart, you've got either your coupon or you've got your credit card, and then you follow the instructions. You enter your coupon or you enter your credit card details, and then you, you pay for your exam. And then the practice exam is unlocked for you. So um, your practice exam, it, the main exam looks exactly like the practice exam, except it's 100 questions and the time limit is either 90 minutes or 110 minutes. But the exam itself is exactly the same. So this one is, is a small pool of, of questions. Some of them are exam questions, some of them are not, um, but they all look the same. 
So you, you can practice this by practicing your timing and practicing reading the exams. So I'm going to show you quickly what, how we, we um, advise people to do this. You see here, there's a flag. And um, it's a question and it's five to a choice of five things. So the data governance touch points throughout the project life cycle are facilitated by this organization. You think, mm, I'm not sure I need to look this up. Flag it, and then you must guess. You think, ah, I think it must be the data governance office, but I'm going to check. Then you flag it. Make sure you go through the entire exam with flagging what you're not sure about, what you are sure about, Right. What you are sure about, then you 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 say, oh, no, I, I'm actually sure I don't need to flag. Sometimes there is a, a question where you, you think, well, what are they talking about here? These not questions are difficult. Remember then when you are false, that they actually in the exam setting notes, they asked the exam teams to avoid these, but there are still some in there. They asked them to avoid false and, and asking for a what is not true. So I, I think it's that I'm not or if there's a if you're a slow reader and there's a lot of reading, then flag it and come back to it. But always, always guess. Because it is, it's not negative marking. You can always get you've got a chance of uh, you've got a one in five chance of getting uh, getting something right. So we go through the, the those were all governance. Now here we've got um, document and content. So like what armor stands for. Um, that generally accepted record keeping, I know this, and I don't need to look it up. Um, but go through them all and answer them all. And I'm showing you at the bottom because my screen is small. Sometimes this thing appears at the right hand side of your screen. See this, it shows you what you've answered. It shows you what you flagged. Make sure at the end of your exam, you've answered everything. You flag what you need to go back to. And um, it allows you to jump right back to that. That's when you start looking stuff up. On your PDF, you can use your scan feature because they generally do not paraphrase stuff. They put it in exactly as the way the, the, the DM box says it. I, I did my data governance one with a PDF and I was, I was finding it, it would jump exactly to where it was supposed to be. But you need to have a separate device for your PDF. You're not allowed to have a screen attached to your um, your, your uh, laptop. And you, you have to have a laptop running Chrome. You have to have a, a, a microphone and a camera because the honor lock, oh, let me show you that. Let's go back here, leave that. Honor lock, there was a way of testing honor lock and I think it was here when we decided the exam. So you can test honor lock here. This is what honor lock does. Oh, sorry, I'm running over. On a lock practice quiz, it shows you that before you do your quiz, just check that on a lock's working on your computer. Some some company laptops have got a problem. You need IT to put uh, an on a lock, um, or you need to download an on a lock, a Chrome extension for on a lock, so that it takes control of your mic and your camera. And these are your instructions. It's got to see your face at all times. Uh, I did this once in, in, in one of the exams and it paused my exam. It doesn't throw you off. It just pauses the time and you've got to restart the time. So it wants you to take a picture of yourself in the corner. Was, oh, OK, I've got to take one display off already to, to continue. And then you have to take a picture of your face, a picture of your ID and a scan of your room. And then it starts your exam for you. So that's how on a lock works. Um, it is always a person on duty. There's no, you can take your exam at any time of the day or night. Because it's worldwide, obviously, there's always got to be someone on duty for honor lock. So if you have a problem with honor lock, within two minutes, there will be someone live on the, on, the, on the help chat. So you don't have to worry about that. If you make a mistake at any point in your enrollment, um, we've got the most brilliant person in Australia who, who is our support person who will help you. There's nothing she can't fix. So um, don't be don't be don't be afraid. Um, get onto this enrollment. If you've decided you're going to do the exam, buy it now. Get onto it and and get enrolled. You only need to take your exam when you're ready, and it never expires. And your practice test never expires. As you could see, I've been I've been doing it 
many times with, with my, um, my training classes. So you can do it as many times as you like and your exam never expires. Any questions? Have I made you feel a little bit more comfortable? So, um, Veronica, I just wanted to find out, though, in terms of, or at least, what would you um, recommend uh, in terms of time? Like, how much, how much time you need to take between each one of the exams? Uh, yeah, because oh, it's, it's, I'm just not entirely sure on the complexities <laughs> of the exams. That's why. Yes, it's it's basically it, it depends on the person. You know, some people uh, in the, in the past they used to have this thing called a boot camp, and you you write all the exams from the room, and um and and that was quite daunting. We we prefer people to be properly prepared. So it depends what you need to be properly prepared. Some people with a lot of experience who've been using the DMBOC con constantly don't need to do much extra extra preparation. You got it. But if if it's new to you then um, you know, it depends on how you feel comfortable. The other thing that's important as well is how comfortable you are with writing exams. And we found that to be a real hindrance for a lot of people, it scares them, especially people who haven't written exams for a long time. Yeah. And um, you know, those that have been at university recently, they, they, they usually, you know, they're not scared of multiple choice exams. And I'm quite good at multiple choice exams because I somehow can see what's wrong, what's not, what doesn't fit in. But I don't know how to teach that. And I try and help people to see that, but it's, it, I think it's just practice with yeah. lots of multiple choice exams. So there's that part as well, is how comfortable you are. And, and um, I'm, you know, I'm here, I'm prepared to help you get, get, get organized and get certified. Um, what we recommend with, with doing the training course if you go through the training course, it would have been it would be nice if you could read the material before, but people don't tend to have time. I mean, that's a lot of reading material, isn't it? And yeah. even when I um, the notes that I've got, I've done for the the, the exam, it, th these are my notes for the the training the training courses, the summaries. That's because it's four days, so it's still a lot of reading. But it 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 would to get the most out of the training course, you to at least read the summaries first, and then we do we go through it in the course where I explain and we ask questions and we interact and make sure that we all understand, um, and then after that go through it again. Um, and there's also my mind maps that you go through the the, the summary notes with the DMBOC, the mind maps with the DMBOC, so that you understand where things are in the DMBOC. And when it comes to the exam, you think I have to look this up. You know where to look it up as well. It's that. But also, we don't want you to 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 wait too long. Yeah. We want you to strike while the iron is hot and while it's fresh in your mind. Because the longer you leave it, the worse it gets. <laughs> Ask Paul. He's he's been, he's left it too long, <laughs> and he's now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Sorry. I've got to put pressure on. I break out into a sweat every time I'm about to go right. Paul <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is uh, also... is right. She's, she, we, I'm part of a, a study group uh, cohort, and and it's it's a common problem. Everybody's... The more... It's almost like the more... I don't know. I don't want to put anybody off, but the more you read, the more you read, sometimes the more freaked out you get, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I would just take Veronica's advice, do the course, do uh, hit the books mm -hmm. and write. All right. All right. If well, I may, Veronica, maybe um, you know, we always just a mm -hmm. psychology maybe of it is sometimes you build up in your mind that you want to crack the 80% and you want to go for the stars. And that is good. I'm not taking anything away from it. And if you can achieve that first time, awesome. Mm. But it's but it is a journey, and if you and I know there's a cost to the rewrite later down the road. But if you do get your seventy plus, and you really desire the eighty, then then don't be don't I can say don't use that as also an excuse to put it off because that's what's happened in our group as well. Everybody's we've all been encouraged to do the eighty thing, but data management is a journey. So you can get your seventy uh, comfortably, and then you know later on. Keep, as you're practicing, as you keep doing data management, you can rewrite and you can crack your AT. I'm not, I'm not advocating everybody to just do rewrites, but you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. Yeah, at least aim for the 70. 
try and just try and see that it is a journey, not a one hit wonder. Now I'm a <laughs> so. Yeah, so it's cool. Paul's been leading this um, <clears throat> this study group, and we found it to be very helpful. I think our study group they've they've more than prepared themselves for the exam. They actually they they dived really deeply into the into the study material, which maybe took a bit long, but yeah. they've all really, really deepened their understanding of data management. So we want to continue this. We want to try and continue having a study group. It's been a lunchtime study group, so from half past 12 to half past one. And and everybody takes a turn in, in preparing a, a, a chapter yeah. and then there's discussion. But we want to try and, and keep it short so that we, we, we do a, a it's a three weeks stint on study group, and then everybody uh, commits to write the exam at the same time. You have to do the exam online, but if everybody commits to saying, okay, this Saturday we are going to do it, and um, and and you know you can keep your, keep each other accountable. All right, nice. <laughs> and there's no and there's no extra charge for the study group. It's all you know. It's all we're enjoying it as well. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you, everybody. Just okay, thanks. And and Sigrid, let me know how you get along too. Um it's always um a, a fellow, a fellow teacher. <laughs> I think you'll you'll be good at the multiple choice. Are you good at multiple choice exams? Maybe it's the teacher in us. I don't know. <laughs> That's open. Great. Okay. I'm gonna stop the recording there. If there's any more questions, we can take them still or um drop us a note or contact on LinkedIn, any of the any of the above. All right. Perfect. Thanks, Paul.